Never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Hi. Long ago in a land far, far away, when I was a young man back in 1982, to be precise, I became a member of the New York City Fire Department. One of the, uh, the, the characteristics of that group of folks that I was working with back then that jumped out at me right away was their ability to embellish a story. They would go out in a pretty minor routine, and by the next few days, uh, it was, you know, the biggest conflagration that ever happened in the world, and we're lucky to be alive, kind of stories would emerge out of that. And another thing that I saw in terms of storytelling was brilliant. We used to sit in, in the evening after all the routine chores were done, we, we, and we had dinner, and we had a big communal room in the back of the firehouse where the 13 men on duty at any given time would sit and watch HBO movies. HBO was brand new back then, and it was kind of uh, nice to be watching the movies. Now, there were three different companies in that firehouse, and any one of those companies could go in or out all together or one at a time or any combination of the three. So if one company went out on a run and the other two were there, while we were sitting watching a movie. So say, you know, that one company went out and it was a minor event and they were back 20 minutes later, they would come in and sit down on the couch and say, what's going on in regard to the movie or the show that was playing on HBO? And I watched this guy make up a totally fictitious story about what the movie was about. And he brought these guys up, the guys who had been at, back up to speed on the movie, and it was in perfect, perfect synchrony with what was going on in the movie at the time. So it made perfect sense to the guys that were missing. And then we would just all sit back and watch the looks on the guys' faces as they were like, what's going on here? It doesn't, you know, it does, like just didn't register. And, and it was really, really funny. And I learned the value of a good story. So tonight, I am going back to the Sukhumvit area to meet another friend for dinner, Marcus Concanon, a very good friend of mine here, and we're going to have dinner at Scruffy Murphy's, an Irish pub. That should be nice. And that's on Soy 23, which is right in the heart of the entertainment zone of Soy Cowboy. And I'm going to tell you a story about Soy Cowboy, an urban legend that I just loved. And it turned out to be true. In this particular case, the facts did line up with the story. So come on along with me, and I'll tell you the story, and I'll show you where Soy Cowboy actually is. The sun won't be down, so it won't be all that exciting, but I'll show it to you nonetheless. And I'll tell you the urban legend of the big black cowboy. Come on along. I know that things are getting a little bit back to normal because it's getting a little bit harder to get a taxi cab. Taxis here practice kind of an ad hoc right of refusal. It, they're probably not supposed to do it, but it is a common practice. Uh, Ekamai BTS? Tini, okay. Tini, yeah? Okay. Bon Bon Forty-one baht. It's a little over a dollar. Imagine that New York City, they, they charge you. Uh, taxi charges you like. $3.50 just to get in and say good morning. This interchange at Asok, I've showed it to people before, it's a very busy interchange between the elevated BTS uh, light rail system and the underground MRT, which we're headed toward now. Now, we're not going to get on the MRT. I'm on my way 
the sorry cowboy. And this is a way to get there without having to brave the busy crosswalks of Sukhumvit and also Something that I want to show you here So in another example of Thai craziness, getting on the moving stair, the escalator from the MRT coming up, you would board the escalator on the left-hand side, whereas going up to the BTS, you board the up escalator on the right-hand side. So they're on opposite sides at this interchange. The BTS escalators are opposite the MRT escalators meaning this stream of traffic has to cross each other. Now, it's not too bad now, but when it gets really crowded, it's just chaotic and crazy. In New York, there'd be fistfights every 10 minutes. The Thais, not being New Yorkers, are more peaceful people, so they tend to just ignore it. But it's one of those crazy things that I'm like, why did not somebody fix this? They probably don't even notice. So you just pass through the crazy exchange and then, uh, back up the other side on the way to Soy Cowboy. So emerging out of the underground interchange, one comes up on the other side of the street. That's where I got off the, uh, the BTS. And you come out and you make a right. Now let me tell you about the legend of the big black cowboy. Soy Cowboy is a street. It's a, it's a small street that is an entertainment zone. Entertainment zone is a Thai euphemism for a collection of go-go -go bars and whorehouses. Now it's daytime, so there's not a heck of a lot going on here. Uh, there are probably some street food vendors for the folks who are showing up to work. At nighttime, this place is lit up with neon, uh, or at least when it's crowded. And it does get crowded, and there are people coming back, so uh, I was here a few days ago and I walked down the street and there were about four uh, bars open. And uh, here we go, welding, arc welding without glasses. That, uh, that goes right along with the, uh, the crazy interchange that we just went through. Hey, it's what the, <laughs> <that's> a, <laughs> work of safety is not a high priority in, in Thailand. <laughs> So, okay, back to the big black cowboy. We have a cowboy too, that's a bar here now. But the first cowboy bar, uh, legend had it, was opened by a, uh, a guy who was a, a US airman. And he, uh, when he got out of the service, uh, he liked Bangkok so much he decided to stay here. And he opened up a bar, uh, I guess it would have been cowboy one, and that airman was supposedly a Texan, a big, tall Texan, and he had a penchant for wearing cowboy hats. So that's the story. That soy cowboy, you know, grew from that. If you, anybody has a good idea in Asia that works, people will copy it. Clearly, it's been copied quite a lot along this little street. When the uh, legend has it, the big black cowboy started his bar back in the late 70s, I think 1977. Well, it turns out it's a true story. T.G. Edwards was the guy's name. And he was an airman stationed up in Camp Friendship, up in uh, Korat, a place that I uh, intend to visit one day soon. Tell some stories about that region. So like I said, I love it when the stories actually meet the facts. T.G. Edwards came here and he wanted to open up a bar in uh, Pat Pong, uh, another entertainment zone area, but the rents were too high. So he came over here and this was just one little street. I think there was an existing bar on it at the time. And he opened the Cowboy Bar and introduced go-go dancers, which were a big thing back in the 70s. And he had go-go dancers with big poofy hair and short skirts and, uh, and serving booze. And he was uh, catering to uh, servicemen, I guess. I don't know who he was catering to. He just opened the damn bar and it was a huge success. And all of these copycats followed and it became so popular, they named the street after him. Soy Cowboy. So T.G. Edwards, if you're still alive, well done, my friend. It's nice to have a legacy. <laughs> so right over there is where I emerged from Soy Cowboy. So coming 
uh, away from the Asok uh, end of Soy Cowboy, if you make a left-hand turn and walk uh, just a few meters, you will encounter Scruffy Murphy's Irish Pub. Now, I've been here, here before, and I know Scruffy Murphy's is a pretty cool place. So I'm meeting my friend uh, Marcus in there for dinner. I had this idea the other day. I was watching a video of a really, really popular YouTuber. I mean, like, a, you know, several million subscribers, a guy named Mark Weems. And he does uh, food stuff around the world. He's stationed out of Bangkok as well. and actually has a restaurant here that I'll probably go check out. But he was like, you know, compulsively positive. The video that I watched of his, he was in Pakistan. And that's what he does. He goes around the world and he shows how people make food. And he was just so, so over the top, positive, and upbeat, and smiling like crazy as he showed this guy in Pakistan stirring a gigantic pot of brown liquid while he was showing that video of the guy stirring the pot of brown liquid. He was saying, oh, the aroma, the smell, the look, the feel, the texture, it's just so wonderful, and on and on like that. And I'm thinking, yeah, it looks like a big pot of shit soup, soup to me. And I got this idea. I said, you know, I should do like a restaurant review channel here in Bangkok and tell the truth about what I experienced. Well... I'm not going to do that, but I am going to go in and talk with my friend Marcus about it, and we'll tell you why I'm not going to do it. Uh, hi, this is, uh, what's your name? Mick. Mick is uh, the manager of the place, Scruffy Murphy's. So I got this brilliant idea the other day. I was watching some YouTube guy that was like totally over the top positive. He was uh, showing a guy in Pakistan, uh, you know, stirring a, a vat of big brown liquid and he's talking about how wonderful it smelled, how good it looked. It looked like a pot of shit soup to me. Okay. And I thought, I'm going to go out and start doing a uh, an honest review of restaurants. And then I remembered where I am. <laughs> <laughs> you see him laughing? Why can't you do that here? Oh, well, you can here. No well, I can here because this is a good place. I've been here and I like it. So I'll, I would give a positive review about it. But if I went someplace and gave a negative review... Oh, you'd be uh, in jail. That, well, <laughs> you'd get sued. You could be in trouble, yeah. Yeah, you don't. yeah, yeah. yeah. No. It's, it's, it's a law here. You can't defame people, even if you tell the truth about them. If you do something to hurt a person's business here, you are liable by law. So, you know, maybe I'll just come to places like this that I know are good. <laughs> okay. okay. So an old gramophone, that's actually a very Irish memory for me. One of my old aunties, when I was a little boy growing up in New York, who had come from Ireland, had one of them. That reminds me of her. So here I am at Scruffy Murphy's. I ordered a pork chop, which looks pretty good. And Marcus got, uh, what did you get? I got the bacon and cabbage. Very it's Irish. Like used to make. <laughs> So I'm going to sign off here so John Bolton's man loving a woman won't get me a copyright strike. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time.